Welcome everyone to today's Back to Basics on Java series session. Today marks number three of six of our series and is around introduction to Azure App Service. So today's session will be led by Julian Dubois, who manages the Java Developer Advocacy Team in Microsoft. So delighted to be welcoming Julian with us today. Um, just to run through a couple of housekeeping um, things before we get started. So Microsoft's code of conduct is to be respectful, welcoming of everyone today. We may see um, some differences of opinions and um, different um, understandings. So please just be respectful to everyone today and kind throughout the session. And this session will be 25 minutes long with a five minute Q&A at the end. So any questions that you have throughout, please just drop them into that q and I'll keep an eye on them and we will get around to them by the end of the session. And one last thing to note is that this session is being recorded. It will be available to watch on demand. I'll post that link um, where you can access it at the end of the session. So I'll hand over to Julian to get us started today. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Emma. I am very happy to be with you today. So again, it's the third uh, session of this series of Back to Basics uh, uh, App Service, well, Azure for Java developers, sorry. Uh, let me introduce myself first. So I'm Julien Dubois. Usually people know me uh, because of this project called Jipster, we can go and check it out at jipster.tech. It's a code generator for Java and it works on App Service. So it's uh, one of the subjects uh, uh, for today. Uh, I'm also known for being a Java champion because I wrote a book on Spring and because I speak at conferences. And as Emma just said, I'm also managing the Java developer advocacy team at Microsoft. So inside my team, we have Rory, who did the first two series of uh, the first two sessions of this series. And we've got Sandra, who will we do the, the last two series, those last two sessions on, <laughs> about this, on this series. Sorry. And you can follow me on Twitter at Julien Dubois. Uh, so what we are going to talk uh, today uh, is a platform as a service and as an app service. So uh, I will first introduce briefly what a platform as a service is. Uh, I will then do a tour of Azure App Service, and then while well, most of uh, today's session will be about creating and deploying a Java application to App Service, so it's going to be an on-zone session with, with a demo. Um, within Azure, uh, we've got a lot of different services. Uh, platform as a service is right on the screen here, uh, so it's on the right hand side. Uh, those are the services where we manage most of the underlying systems for you, like we manage the OS, we manage the GDK, sometimes we manage also uh, the application server. Uh, whereas if you go to the left hand side of the screen, you can run, for example, a VM on Azure where, where you manage everything, so you have more control, but then you have to manage, upgrade and patch everything. So platform as a service is a way to make developers more productive because they have less to, to worry about. And uh, as a Java developer, it's specifically interesting. Uh, it means that you're just going to write Java code, push it to uh, a platform as a service offer, and that uh, service will run your Java code for you and manage everything for you. And that's why I would say most people, uh, most Java people should use a platform as a service uh, because it's just easier and, and faster to go to production with it. Um, usually, I was speaking just about Java developers, but more generally speaking, why do people want to use a platform as a service? They want to use it because they've got low maintenance. I mean, the maintenance is done by the cloud provider, so there is maintenance, but it's not done by you. Uh, they are highly scalable, so unless you, I would say, mess up when coding your application, scalability is made by the, the cloud plat platform, so you have nothing to do. Uh, usually, budget and cost are well under control. Uh, we will have a quick look at this, but uh, you can estimate what your budget will be and you can uh, limit it, so it's usually good. And last thing, it's not as fun as the other things, but compliance. Uh, on Azure, we are using our own uh, GDK, which is supported. So, well, for some industries, it's important to have a supported version of Java, for example, of a supported version of your application server, and that's what we provide you, and that's important for some businesses. Uh, that was about platform as a service, I would say in general, concerning Azure itself. In Azure, we've got several offers which can be considered as a platform as a service. The most important one is Azure App Service, and that's why we're going to talk about it today. Uh, we have also specific offerings for JBoss, WebLogic, or Spring. So, well, if you want 
to have a look at our, I would say, higher hands offer. Well, you, we will also have you covered on those if you need them. Uh, but I would say for most people, for people having normal needs with Java, uh, app service is, is a great choice for you. And when you want to deploy your Java app, uh, workloads to app service, you, you have basically two ways to do it. Either we have native language support, so we have it for Node.js, for .NET, for Python, and for Java. So you just push your, your Java code to Azure, and Azure will run it for you. Or you can build it as a Docker image, and then Azure will run the Docker image for you. So there are two ways to do it. We will do today the first one, because I'm guessing it's, it's if enough for most people, and it's easier to use. Uh, you just push basically your jar file to, to Azure App Service and it will run it for you. So it's more efficient and easier to do. But if you want to do more complex stuff, if you want to have more control, you can also build a Docker image and that's also working. Uh, let's talk a little bit about money uh, because, well, usually when people talk about the cloud and especially with platform as a service offerings, they, they are interested by the, the, uh, the cost and the budget. Uh, so, Azure App Service is a very broad offering, uh, so you have different plans, and depending on the plan that you take, well, you can have different OS, either Linux or Windows, but also different CPU, memory, availability options. Uh, so uh, we're going to have a quick look at the plans when I will do the demo, but one of the biggest decisions you will have to take is the plan that you need. Do you want a free plan or a more expensive plan because you have some specific needs? And yes, that's also why I put that slide. We have a free plan. In fact, we will see there are like two free plans. There is one which is like truly free all the time and one uh, which is free the first month and then it's very um, inexpensive, uh, but it's also a bit more powerful. So uh, I would rather recommend the other plan, but I mean, there are free plans. Uh, they are not very uh, fast. You don't have a great CPU with it. They are free, but you can run your Java workloads on them. And if you don't want to pay anything, well, it's, it's good for you. And I'm guessing as today, most people are here to learn about Azure. Well, that's a great way to get started uh, because you will, you won't pay anything. Um, we've just introduced Azure App Service. Let's get started and do a demo. So basically, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to create a Java app. I'm going to create an app service, and I'm going to deploy uh, uh, my Java app to my app service instance. Uh, there are three main ways to create an app service instance. You can use the Azure portal, which is what I'm going to use right now. It's the easiest way to get started. It's a graphical user interface, a web-based interface, so it's easy. You've got the Azure CLI, which is our command line options. Uh, it's basically the same thing, but using the command line, so you can automate stuff, but it's, of course, uh, not as easy to use as a, as a graphical user interface. And then you've got automation tools like ARM or Terraform, uh, I personally like a lot Terraform, so that's the one I'm pushing. I will show you some, some code at the end uh, with Terraform. Uh, those tools are more advanced, but you will very quickly want to use them because they allow you to automate what, you're, what you are doing. So basically what I'm doing now using the other portal is basically what you do at the very start, but very quickly you will not want to use it any, anymore. You will want to automate your work and you will probably want to use a tool like Terraform. And that's why I'm mentioning it now. Uh, once you've got your instance running, you will want to deploy your Java application to it. There are also three main ways to do it. You can use Maven or Gradle, so a plugin in your build system. Uh, that's what I will be doing in my demo. Uh, it's what most Java developers will be familiar with. It's very easy to use. Um, and that's why I will be using it. Uh, you can also use IDE plugins. Personally, I don't like them that much because for me, it's two different uh, things. Uh, uh, when I want to deploy, I usually don't want to do it with my IDE, but if you like to do that, well, we've got plugins for you. And last options is, uh, last option, sorry, is to use GitHub Actions. So you can use a CI CD system to deploy your code. Uh, that's what I would recommend uh, in normal usage. Uh, so we've got a specific GitHub Action to, to deploy your, your Java application to Azure App Service. It's pretty easy to use also. So if you want to learn more about all of this, we've got a Java learning pass on Microsoft Learn. I put the link here and Emma will give you the link at the end. Uh, and well, everything is much more detailed in our learning pass. So uh, if, if, uh, well, if you're interested, I, I, uh, I, I do recommend that you go there. Uh, let's get to the demo. So I'm going to close that window and, oh, uh, I'm actually sharing something. No, I'm not sharing anything. 
Sorry, hang on. Let me just go here. I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, I can't see anything. I hope you're seeing my command line. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just sharing the command line. Sorry, I'm messing up. Let me try it again. Oh, got it. Sorry, this one is good. So, uh, you should see my command line and let me open up a browser. So, I'm going to generate a Java application. Uh, uh, there are many ways to do it. You can use Jipster. So, Jipster is a project I'm working on and this creates a full stack Java application. So, that's really good, but it might be a bit too complex for just a small demo that we are doing right now. So, I'm going to use this. So, this is a Spring initializer. So, start.spring.io. So if you're a Java developer, you probably use Spring and you, you've probably already heard about this. Uh, so you just go there. Uh, I'm going to select everything by default. I'm ju just going to name uh, my project Reactor, sorry, Reactor demo. Uh, I'm going to add a few dependencies. I'm going to use web because it's, I'm going to create a web app. I'm going to add the dev tools because I want auto reload in my application. And I'm going to add actuator for monitoring my app. It's useful and I will try to do a short demo about monitoring. So let me generate this. Uh, I'm going to unzip it. Here's the code and I'm going to open this up uh, using uh, Visual Studio Code. So here's my, oh sorry. I'm going to open it cleanly because it's not happy. Come on. Here it is. Um, so it's a Maven project, so everything will be built automatically. Let me just show you the main class. So here it is. And I can run this. It's a, it's a very classical Spring Boot project. Uh, I can run it either using the Spring Boot dashboard here or just as a main Java class uh, here. Let me run it if it's when it's happy. Come on. Not happy. Come on, well, I'll I'll do with the Spring Boot dashboard. It's oh, it's still syncing. Here it is. Let's go. Uh, so this is a very simple web app with nothing yet. So if I click on localhost, I'm going to have a, a, a 404 error page because nothing is there. Let me just oh, come on. Not started yet. Come on. Here it is. So here is my 404 page. I've got nothing yet. I'm going to cut something very quick and easy because we, we don't have much time and it's not the goal here. Uh, I will call it hello controller.java. So it's a simple uh, a Spring Boot controller. So let's put a REST controller here and, and let's do a public string hello uh, method. So that's what Jones, uh, hello, uh, hello Emma, because Emma is our host today. <laughs> So I don't call it the same thing every day. And I'm going to map this on the root on point. I'm going to save this. As I've got auto reload working on, on Spring Boot, well, I just refresh here and I'm going to have hello Emma. So that's cool. So that's my app. And I want to deploy this to Azure App Service. Uh, again, I'm going to use Azure Portal. Uh, here it is. Uh, I've got an empty portal. I'm using my own personal account, by the way. So. Uh, it's not my Microsoft account, so uh, as I told you, you've got some free uh, tier, uh, so I'm, I hope I will not pay too much. Uh, so let's create my app. Uh, first thing I need to do is create a resource group. So a resource group is a, a logical grouping of, of resources. That's where I will work in. Uh, I'm going to call it Reactor Demo. No, I'm typing too fast. Uh, I will put it in West Europe. Uh, it's important when you work on Azure to create those resource groups and put everything in a resource group because at the end of this demo, all I will need to do is delete the resource group and everything will disappear. So it's a great way to test and delete everything very easily without taking any risk. Uh, now I've got this resource group, let's work inside it. So first thing you need to do is create a plan. Uh, there are different ways to, to have a look for something in Azure, but I'm always using the uh, um, the search engine here because it's the easiest way to find something. Uh, so as we 
introduced earlier in the slides. So a plan is just the type of machines I am going to use. So I'm going to, first of all to say I'm going to use my resource group. I'm going to name my plan. Usually I like to prefix them. So I'm calling it plan reactor. I prefix with the type of resource I'm using. Um, and here, well, you can see that already I'm going to do some choices for my plan. Uh, it can use either Linux or Windows. I recommend Linux. I know I work for Microsoft, but uh, honestly, Linux works very well for Java on App Service. So I recommend Linux. I'm going to put it also in West Europe because that's where I live. And here I have a choice between different types of machines. So that's where you pay. Let's first have a look at the free ones. Uh, so if you don't want to pay anything, you've got this one, which is totally free all the time, and you can create 10 of them. So it's pretty nice, uh, but it's not very powerful. And you, so you've got 60 minutes per day of running. So it's normal. I mean, it's, it's enough for a normal app. Its main uh, issue is that it's pretty slow, but it's free. Uh, that's why you usually recommend this one, which is free for the first 30 days. So for people like you who are just getting started on Azure, this one is much more powerful. It's going to be free for one month. So it's honestly, it's a better deal. Uh, and then if you are happy with it, uh, it's so they say only uh, 11 euro per month. I've already, already seen it much cheaper in the US. So depending on the region that you take, you might also have a cheaper price. Let's say it's about 10 euros or $10. Uh, as we don't have that much time, I'm going, I'm going to take a nice machine. Uh, again, it's only going to run for a few minutes. So I'm not going to pay much. I'm going to pay a few cents. So I'm going to take like this very fast one. Uh, I'm going to say apply. I'm going to create my plan. So this does not create any instance yet. It's just a plan. And inside that plan, I'm going to create my instances. And like I left several instances, uh, for example, for testing, uh, for production, to do blue-green deployment. Um, uh, for development. Um, so this is usually pretty quick, here it is. So this is my plan. Inside it, I don't have that many options, so I will go very fast here. You can scale it up or down, uh, and also out or not, so depending on, on how you want to scale your app. And your apps are here. And at the moment, I have no apps, and that's what we want to create. So let me go straight to there. So I'm going to say app service again, here it is. And I'm going to create my app service instance. I will put it in my resource group. I will call it uh, Reactor Demo. Hopefully nobody has used it. Uh, I can publish my code in two ways. Uh, as we saw in the slides, I can uh, just send my Java code as a jar file, which is what I would recommend. Or I can use a Docker image so I can build my code as a Docker image and push the Docker image. Both of them work. This one is easier, so that's why I'm starting with it. And I'm going to use Java 11. As you can see, we support many other languages and, and stacks. And I'm going to, again, do it in West Europe. And I will use the plan that I've created just earlier, so that's cool. Let me create everything. So this is creating my uh, app service instance. It's going to be done in like one minute. So let's have a look at what we want to do next. What we want to do next is deploy my app, so which is here. Let me shut it down. Uh, I want to deploy that app to App Service. Again, there are many ways to do it. The easiest one for me is to use our, uh, our Maven plugin. So this is my Maven um, configuration, my pond.xml. And I'm just going to go to um, this website. So it's on GitHub. Uh, there, there is a lot of documentation for our Azure Maven plugins, but this is what I prefer because that's the code. So if you go there, it's always good. And they give you the right configuration, sorry, <laughs> to deploy. I'm just going to copy paste this and, and, and configure it here. So what did what did I get? So I'm, I'm getting, uh, so my plugin with the default version, which is the latest one. Uh, and then I've got some configuration here. I, I can remove some of them. This one is not needed. It's my subscription ID. I don't need it here because I'm already logged in. Uh, my resource group, I called it Recto Demo. My application, I just called it also Recto Demo. Uh, for the rest, it's already selected because I've already configured it before, so I don't need all of this. And all this is telling now is I'm going to take in my target directory a jar file. So that's what Spring Boot creates. 
and it's going to deploy it into this resource group and inside this resource group inside this application. That's as easy as that. Um, let me go to my app, which has been deployed now. Here it is. So I'm on app service now. Um, well, we're going to have a look at the menu here because there is a lot of things, uh, but what is interesting is to just have a look at the URL here. So my app is running, but it's empty. I haven't deployed anything yet, so I've got just a, a default page. Let me deploy it. I'm going to deploy it using uh, the console because I'm guessing it will be easier to understand for everybody. So I'm going to my download folder and to my app. Uh, so I created a Maven plugin, so I need first to package my app, package. So that's, that's, this is going to create my jar file, and then I'm going to deploy it uh, with the, 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 the plugin we have just configured. It should be built now, and allow, let, let me deploy it. So the command is Maven, uh, Azure Web App Deploy, I've already packaged, so let's not do this again. So this is going to take my jar file and push it to my instance here. Let me just here go to the logs, so you can see it deploying live. Uh, so this is one of the most in, important uh, menu item. You can have uh, the logs of your app here. And so when you are deploying something, it's very interesting to have a look at the log and to, well, to understand what's happening. You can see it's deploying it right now. And it's going to appear here very quickly as soon as it's deployed. Uh, as time is running, let me just show you a few things on the left hand screen. Uh, here, well, you've got a lot of items. I, we don't go through all of them, of course. Uh, but here you can see we've got a deployment center. That's very interesting when you want to automate your deployment from GitHub, for example, or if you want to do blue green deployment. Oh, here is my deployment. It's successful. So, oh, it's arriving in my logs. So we can see my app starting up. We can see Spring starting up. And it started. It should have started in like two seconds, three seconds here. And if I go to my app here, or if I reload, we've got hello Emma, or hi Emma again. <laughs> so I'm live in production. As you can see, it was pretty easy and useful uh, to, to, well, to use all those tools. I can be in production in no time. Uh, if you want to work on this, you will probably have some trouble at some point. So again, the best tool to have here is a log. Uh, you can use it here through the portal, but we've got also uh, plugins in your IDEs, for example, or some command line arguments. Uh, you can also have logs here with something called log analytics. So you can have a, a detailed request on your logs to better understand what's going on. Uh, one thing I always recommend also is to set up an else check here. Uh, so the else check is checking if your app is alive. Uh, that's very useful. And uh, if you use Spring Boot like I do, so you remember when I generated my Spring Boot app here, yeah, I selected uh, actuator, Spring Boot actuator. This is great for ops. So it's creating an endpoint for monitoring my app. And this is what I'm configuring here. So I'm just saying save here. And now uh, Azure App Service will automatically, like every minute, it will check that endpoint to see if the app is live or not. And if it's not, it will restart it. So now I'm sure that my app is going to run fine without any, any, any trouble. Uh, one last thing I want to discuss about this uh, uh, this uh, web uh, uh, interface is the settings here configuration because that's what we're going to talk about next week. Next week we will talk about databases. If you want to connect your database to your application, you will probably want to configure some uh, environment variables. So here they are. Here is our, well, you can set them up here uh, using a graphical user interface. Uh, so that's probably where you will want to go and what we will do uh, uh, next week. Uh, that's all about the web interface. Probably you will want at some point to automate. Hi, Julian, are you still with us? Hello again, I got some next work. Yes, are we back? I think we're back. Yeah. So if you see, yeah, sorry, <laughs> it happens. I don't know where, uh, what happened, but anyway. So uh, last thing, you will want to automate all this uh, because usually you don't click a run like I did. I mean, you do that first time because you want to see how it all works, but uh, it's not going to be fun uh, to do that many times. Uh, so usually people want to automate that using a tool. I'm using always something called Terraform. 
So I just wanted to show you the same configuration, but using Terraform, just to, to give you uh, an idea of how it's working. Uh, here I have set up my app service plan, so exactly what we did by clicking. Uh, I have selected Linux, I'm using the free tier, and inside it I uh, uh, configured my app service instance. I have configured it to use Java, um, oh, and to use some Spring uh, specific uh, environment variables. So this is a bit more complex to do, but this allows you to automate uh, what we have just seen. Uh, so honestly, uh, uh, you're going to, to to try app service for one week and after that we want to go that way. Uh, we have also, uh, we have a YouTube channel uh, for Java on Azure. Uh, we've got some great uh, uh, resources on that. Uh, I will also share them with, with, with Emma. Uh, but if you want to go further, I highly encourage you to have a look at automation because that's what is, uh, 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 I would say, the hidden treasure of, of Azure that you don't see at the beginning. At the beginning, you're always clicking on the web uh, tool and very quickly, uh, you, you, you understand that the interest of Azure is that you can uh, automate everything and that all of this is going to be much, much simpler. Uh, if you did that demo with me and, and you saw, uh, I'm just going to finish right now, by the way, Emma, so we can take some questions, but it's just to, to show uh, how, how uh, well you, you, you should finish uh, after testing. Uh, so my resource group is called Reactor Demo. I'm just going to delete it, Reactor Demo. And now this, this is deleting everything, and so my instance has just run, I don't know, a few minutes, so this is going to cost me like, I don't know, two cents. And, uh, and so that's a great way of testing without paying anything, even if you take like me uh, I an instance, which is, I would say, easier to, to, to play with. Uh, let's have a look at the questions, uh, because I see we have like three or four minutes left. Uh, and it's... Sorry, we've got nine questions. Uh, oh, what's the name of the YouTube channel? Uh, I think that, oh, hang on. Let me show you our, uh, so it's called on YouTube. It's called uh, Java on Azure. We'll see that if Google is good or not. Yeah, here it is. So if you go there, oops, sorry, <laughs> autoplay. Uh, we've got quite a lot of videos in it. Uh, let me share it in the chat uh, because it's pretty long. Um, we did a series of, of Terraform for Java developers, so that's the one I was referring to. Uh, I highly, I recommend something like Terraform to automate everything, uh, and that's where really you will win some time uh, very, very quickly. And also, it will limit errors. You know, uh, uh, like I was clicking around and imagine that I, I, I I tell that to my colleague, he does the same thing, but he doesn't click on the right buttons and it's going to cost him like a lot of money. He's going to be pretty angry about me. Uh, if on the other hand, I give him a Terraform configuration with everything set up, he has less work and he cannot mess up. So will be, he will be a lot more uh, uh, happy about that. Uh, we have a look at the other questions. So it's, uh, the thing is syncing. Uh, Oh, sorry. So, and we've got a closed skills challenge. Yeah, but so I guess Emma sent it to everybody. Uh, and the links to the previous session, well, Emma has already sent them. So, yeah, we will we'll have three more sessions. The next one is linked to this one. So, we will talk about databases, SQL databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server. And well, usually when you do a web app, you don't really do what I just did right now. It's just a demo. Uh, you usually want to access some third party system and usually it's a database, a relational database. So next week we will have a look at, uh, well, our three main options and how you connect uh, to them. And a and, um, little bit also, we will talk a little bit also about pricing. Uh, you'll see that you can have something which is fully free or nearly free, you know, very, very cheap uh, using both app service and uh, Azure SQL Server because we've got serverless options there and that's very, very cheap. So if you use both of them, you can play and test everything on Azure without paying anything, which is really good for people who are learning about it. And of course, well, then when you go to production, you can buy, I would say, uh, better machines uh, with uh, more CPU and, and, and availability. But uh, it's the same experience to get started and, and learn about it than when you go to production. Uh, I think we have like 30 seconds left, so I don't know, Emma, if you have anything else. Otherwise, we can just 
send people to our uh, uh, learning path. Here it is. Uh, if you go to uh, Microsoft Learn, so this is our learning website from all of Microsoft, we've got a specific learning path for Java, uh, which is done by uh, my team uh, and myself. Uh, so at the moment, we've got 12 modules. We've got more that we are working on. So if you want to get started about Java and Azure Air, you've got a lot of things from setting up uh, uh, I don't know, your IDE to deploying a Spring Boot app to Azure, which is what we just did, uh, to I don't know, using Spring on Azure, that kind of thing. So uh, it's much more complete. Uh, and uh, well, if you, if, you, if you want to learn more, I, I'm guessing it's the best way uh, to, to do it. So. Thanks, Gillian. I think we will wrap it up there. I've dropped all the relevant links into the Q&A, so that's where everyone can access um, the Learn TV, uh, the Microsoft Learn um, learning modules, um, links to the previous sessions, everything like that. If I've missed anything, please reach out on Meetup. Um, we're watching that all the time for any questions that come through. But Gillian, thank you so much for today, and thank you to everyone for attending. Really hope to see you all again next week. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See you next week. Bye.